Hey, I am Beth Rogers here at the Nebraska State Fair. We are in the birthing pavilion, and I've got this fun little baby that was born oh, just a couple of days ago here. Um, as you can see, there's some more running around. Dot wants to be part of the fun. We are about to go on a tour with Dr. Missy. She's gonna show us around the birthing pavilion, and of course, we couldn't do this without Nutrient Ag Solutions in Cozad and Elwood. So, are you ready to take a tour with me? I'm Dr. Missy, I'm over here by the chicks, if you're wondering where I'm at. And uh, we're gonna just do rounds quick. So I thought I'd just go through and tell everyone a little bit about what the pavilion's about and what we've got going on right now. Over here, we've got the baby chick brooder box. Once the baby chicks get done out of our incubator, they get to go into the brooder box. They gotta be dry. And they will be set in there for 21 days. That's how long it takes for a chick to incubate. Hi, baby. How are you? Right here are our lovely ladies. These are our cells. They are North Landings Crosses. The University of Nebraska Lincoln purchased these cells from Dr. Les Grease at Grease Farms. They are specifically brought into the pavilion for us to feral out in front of the public. The crate on the left feraled at 7 o'clock on Wednesday morning. The middle crate feraled at 7 o'clock on Thursday morning. And the four right crate, she feraled this morning at 7 o'clock. We do like to induce the cells to manipulate when they're going to feral. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. That's what they do in the industry so that they're farrowing the cells during the day and not at night. We have better survivability and less cost to produce. So these piglets are all doing quite well uh, and uh, this will conclude all of our farrowing for the, for the birthing pavilion. We were very fortunate we had minimal dystocia issues, so it's very good. On down here is we have our two pens of goats. This goat here actually had triplets, and one of them was stillborn. One was mummified, meaning it had died in the uterus and the body was starting to resorb it. And then we have the tiny little baby, and we call him Tiny Tim. He was born five days ago, and we had to bottle feed him. We stripped mom and bottle fed him, but uh, the last two days he's figured out how to nurse all on his own. So he's thriving and doing well. comes from UNL in me. These, these cows are Angus. They're meant to be more of a beef breed. We eat them. They are raised for consumption. And these girls are synchronized to go into heat or estrus and bread around Thanksgiving so that they calf here at the state fair. On the far left is our jersey. You can see she's getting a massage. She deserves it. She is uh, a dairy cow. They're bred for milk production. And she had a little heifer calf the other day, and we called her Miss New Jersey. She's very pretty. She's got nice eyelashes, so she looks really good. And uh, we will be milking our Jersey mom twice a day. So we milked her this morning, and we'll milk her again tonight. She gives us a couple gallons of milk a day. That's how you and I can have cereal in the morning. Over here are our sheep. And there's usually two types of reasons why we have sheep. One is for uh, consumption of the meat, and the other is for the fiber, the wool. And it's not uncommon for them to have twins or triplets or quadruplets. This year, it's a hot year. It was hard to get sheep pregnant. This is not a normal time for them. We have two singles and one set of twins and everyone's happy and doing well. So, and then here's our last pen of goats. And uh, Houdini there, she's laying back there. She likes to hide, she's shy. I'm not entirely sure why she's shy, but she's shy. And those are her twins, they're those kids. 
And then this number 45 is going to go any day. And then Dot, she's over here. I don't know. I think Dot may have, uh, might have missed the boat a little bit. I don't think she's probably going to kid during the fair. I think we missed out on her. I think she'll, I think she's about uh, a month behind everyone else. We know she's pregnant. We just don't think she's quite ready yet. So, and uh, it's not uncommon for boats to have singles, twins, or triplets. And then we've got the ducks. If anyone's had ducks before, they're messy, but they're cute. So ducks get bored. So we have the duck slide for the ducks. It's not currently running now, but we'll get her up and running later. But here's all of our ducks. These are all meat breed ducks. These are not meant for egg laying. These are meant to be butchered and consumed. So uh, we've got the ducks in this, this uh, water tank here and then we also have our duck uh, brooder box there, our little incubator for the ducks so that they stay warm. And, and that concludes rounds at the Nebraska State Fair Birding Pavilion.